We don't know whatever became of John. The tradition is he went to Ephesus, and there's a tradition that the Blessed Mother went to Ephesus with him. And if you go to Ephesus today, they will show you, Ephesus in Turkey, they will show you the house of Mary, where John lived and where Mary ended her life on earth. However, there's another tradition that Mary actually completed her life in Jerusalem. On Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there's a giant basilica, Benedictine basilica, called the Dormition, Dormire. Tradition has it, this is where Mary went to sleep. Now, speaking of Mary there, parenthetically for a moment, I remember I was 10 years old in 1950. It was a holy year, and um, the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven was declared a doctrine of faith. But it was very carefully worded. It did not say that Mary died. It says when her life on earth was completed, she was assumed into heaven. Um, did not want to mention whether she died or not. Um, whether that happened in Ephesus or, or in Mount Zion in Jerusalem uh, is up for discussion. Speaking of John here, John is the younger brother of James, the apostle. They were called together. And uh, in this gospel reading, there's a reference here to John, the beloved disciple, where he went to the tomb with Peter, but he didn't go in. That's an intimation that Peter was already considered the leader. He had a primacy. So John waited, and then Peter went in. And after Peter had gone in to the tomb and the body wasn't there, then John went in. But interestingly, it says John went in, he saw, and he believed. John believed. The sign of faith. So let me say one or two words about John, uh, the beloved disciple. Um, there are four interesting uh, reference to him that of interest to us right now. The first one is at the Last Supper, where the beloved disciple sits obviously next to Jesus. Remember, Peter said, ask him who it is that's going to betray him, because John, or the beloved disciple, was next to Jesus at the Last Supper. Peer again, chapter 19 in John, where Jesus is crucified, at the foot of the cross was Mary and the beloved disciple. You'll remember that. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. He'll appear again um, in chapter 21 here. You remember this, the primacy of Peter. Wonderful place in the Holy Land where uh, seven of the disciples of Jesus gave up on Jesus and they went fishing. And then they came ashore, and Jesus gave them breakfast. And John, the beloved disciple, was one of the seven. And Jesus reconciles them there at Tagba in Galilee. There's one small reference at the end of chapter 21. Now, this raises a question. Who is this beloved disciple? For a long time, most scholars thought it was John himself. It was a autobiographical reference to him, why well, he didn't want to name himself in his gospel. But recent scholarship in the last hundred years wouldn't agree with that. There are various opinions. A minority opinion is that Lazarus, who appears in chapter 11 in the gospel of John, remember he raises Lazarus from the dead, but Jesus weeps at his tomb, and the people say, see how he loved him. So some minority of scholars think maybe, maybe he was the beloved disciple. But uh, Raymond Brown, who was the, the ultimate Johannine scholar, I once asked him about this, and he said the beloved disciple is not a person. The beloved disciple is an image. Whoever follows Jesus Christ is the beloved disciple. And the imaging that John has, of course, John's gospel, 
is different than the others. It's very cryptic. It has second and third level meanings. And Brown claims that uh, the beloved disciple is anyone who follows Jesus Christ is the beloved disciple. You are the beloved disciple. You see and you believe. You are called to sit next to Jesus at the supper of the Lord. You're called to belong to the table of the Lord. You are called to make a great act of faith that when you see the empty tomb, you believe. And you are called to belong to Jesus there in the 21st chapter of John's Gospel. That became a, an interesting discussion here at Holy Family in the year 2010, when we had our centennial, our centennial celebration of the par founding of the parish. And I said, what would we do? And there's a statue up here in this niche. And uh, it's a statue of the beloved disciple. It's androgynous, man or woman, and it's there to remember the hundred years that went before it and all the people who came here, they were all beloved disciples. So when you come across this reference in the Gospel of John, consider it an invitation to each of you, to me, each of us, to really see ourselves as beloved disciples uh, called by Jesus Christ to belong to him in a deep, personal, and intimate way. Now, that's the best way, says most of scholars of John's Gospel, to understand the meaning of the beloved disciple, which appears in this Gospel reading today. Get this sense. It's, this is very important in following Jesus Christ. Get this sense that you are called by name, you are chosen, you are blessed, and you are called by name. Doesn't matter about your imperfection. John was far from perfect. You'll find there, 21st chapter of John's Gospel, he abandons Jesus and he says, forget it, I don't believe anymore, I'm going fishing. Back to what he knew before Jesus called him, he went back to fishing. But then Jesus called him again. See, the beloved disciple is not perfect. The beloved disciple is just beloved. So kind of embrace yourself um, when you pray and embrace yourself when you journey through this day. And when you look at the other people around you, say, wow, these are the beloved disciples of Jesus Christ. It's, it's a marvelous teaching about, from the Gospel of John here when you reflect on the meaning of the beloved disciple in the Gospel of John. Amen. We pause now for a moment of prayer.